Is sight reading part of your daily practice? For me, until quite recently, it didn't used to be. And I came to the conclusion eventually that in fact, this was a very big mistake on my part. Stay tuned and I'll explain why. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves the piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the most from this great hobby. If it's your first trip here, then please remember to subscribe. Simply hit the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen now, and it's all done for you. When I first started relearning piano a few years ago, and I was trying to work out how I was going to spend my daily practice time, I came to the conclusion I wasn't going to bother with sight reading. To be honest, I think the main reason I came to this conclusion was the title. After all, it's sight reading. I associated this, really, with those childhood memories of needing to play a piece first time through by sight when you've never heard it or looked at it before, you know, as you do in exams. Of course, for some people, this is an absolutely essential skill. If you're doing exams, as I said, you need to be able to do it. But if you're an accompanist regularly, or you play for choirs or music groups or whatever it may be, then being able to sight read music is probably a skill that you absolutely need to master and something that you use very often. But for myself, in honesty, I wasn't doing or intending to do any of these real things. So learning pieces didn't mean I needed to be able to read them on sight. To be honest, whenever I learn a piece, I probably spend that much time repeating the bits I find difficult that, for the most part, it almost gets memorised automatically. So pretty much all the time when I'm practising, apart from when I first pick up a brand new piece, I'm more or less practising and playing from memory all the time. What actually led me to the conclusion that it was a mistake not to practise sight reading was when I decided to record Silent Night to post here on YouTube. The idea occurred to me on Christmas Eve itself, so I thought, right, I've got a bit of time to practice today, and then tomorrow morning I can sit down, record it, and post it on Christmas Day. I'd found a beautiful arrangement of this in the December-January issue of Pianist magazine by Montgomery. It's a beautiful little piece to play, it's quite simple, there are no ornaments, there are no leaps, there's no fast passage work, no complex chords. So all in all, something that is well within my technical grasp, or at least should be. However, and this is where my problem came, because I'd not had a lot of time to keep practicing and repeating it, I was needing to rely on the music to play this rather than my memory, which is what I normally use. And what I found was that my reading, quite simply, wasn't good enough to be able to play something even as simple as this, even after I'd already spent quite a bit of time practicing it. And this is where the parallel of being able to read in general came to me. You know, when you think about it, as children when we learn to read, it's a slow process. Learning how to convert that jumble of letters on the page in front of us into a set of meaningful words isn't simple, it takes time. And the same is true with music. Learning how to convert those dots into something that makes sense that we can play takes time to learn as well. Taking this analogy of reading then into my attempts to record this version of Silent Night, what I was finding was that even though theoretically the words in front of me were quite simple, my reading skills weren't quick enough to be able to convert the jumble of letters into the words that were there. This as a result meant that my playing was sort of error prone and hesitant at times. You know, eventually I did manage to get a version of Silent Night recorded, but it did take me a few takes. So reading music, I think, is very similar to reading in general. 
You know, converting that jumble of letters on the page in front of us into meaningful words, which is what we do when we read, is no different than learning how to convert a jumble of dots on a page into a chord, a scale, a musical phrase, whatever it may be. Of course, I guess that the possible combinations of dots on a page is greater than the possible combinations of letters we might see when we read. So we should expect that it's going to take us a very, very long time and a lot of effort before we're able to look at the musical equivalent of transmogrification and say it comfortably, confidently, without having to look four or five times at it first. Thus, it occurred to me that I shouldn't really view the benefit of sight reading as being limited to helping me play things from sight the first time I look at them, but rather that the second part of it is equally important, i.e. the reading element of it. So if I practice this skill, then that will enable me to read things much more easily rather than having to learn and memorize them all the time. If you take any of the great artists, either from Arthur Rubenstein to Yuja Wang or whoever you like, if you watch when they're playing chamber music, more often than not, they have music in front of them. They're rarely playing from memory, but clearly they're not sight reading either. I remember watching a documentary of Arthur Rubenstein and he was playing some chamber music with friends of his at home and he clearly had the music in front of him. Yet it's been said that he had an almost photographic memory as well. Apparently he once learned an entire piano concerto on a train without even having access to the piano. So if he uses the music to read from, why wouldn't any of us want to do the same thing? My view is that sometimes it won't always be possible or practical to be able to commit a piece entirely to memory. And therefore, being able to convert all of those dots in front of you into something more meaningful quickly and easily is a skill that can't be underestimated. You know, if you only did sight reading, say, up to your early grades and have not really done much of it since, then you might draw the analogy that your current reading ability is something around that of early learning books. Certainly something that's not equipped you yet to read War and Peace. Starting on the 1st of January this year, I decided to spend at least 10 minutes a day out of my practice time on sight reading. All I really did, to be honest, was I started using the beginner pieces from Pianist magazine. I have a digital subscription, so all of the back issues are on my iPad. And I just spent 10 minutes a day on the beginner pieces for a while and started moving on to the intermediate pieces a little more recently. And I, even then, if you've got a slightly more complicated intermediate piece, then just play it more slowly. The object of the exercise really is to help you learn how to convert dots into something that your fingers can convert into the keys. And then one benefit that I wasn't expecting to get from this is that as you do this, you get to enjoy playing some really beautiful music for very little effort, in fact. What a way to start the day. I don't propose to try and give a masterclass on sight reading. I think there are already plenty of excellent videos on YouTube on this subject, so you'll find plenty of things to help you. Really, I just want the takeaway from this video to be that if you want to be able to improve your reading as opposed to just sight reading, then really it's only the effort of sight reading regularly that's going to do this for you. If you're not already, then please remember to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner Click that little bell icon and you'll be notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.